Hello, hello. 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 I'm going to go ahead and paste the agenda here. Can everyone open that? Yeah, I got it. Yep. Perfect. All right, we'll give everyone a couple more minutes to join. I know my last meeting was running over as well. So. Hey, Amy. Hi, Erin. Sorry, I'm late. That's okay. Yeah, no problem. About 45 seconds. Else. One call to the next. Yeah. <laughs> Is everyone that's just joining able to see the agenda in the chat, or should I repost that? I wasn't sure if you can see the history after the fact. Uh, I can't see the agenda in the chat. Okay. So I'll just post the one. Let's open there again. One more minute and then we'll get started at five after. All right, it's time. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. All right, good morning. Uh, can we record, Alex? Have you been recording? Or have you, did you already start it, it looks like? It's recording. Perfect. Thank it's you. recording. All right, so good morning. This is Wednesday, uh, November 13th. This is the CNCF storage SIG. Um, <clears throat> so on the agenda, um, as hopefully everyone knows by now, uh, we had some pretty sad news. Uh, Brad Childs, who was one of the co-tech leads of the CNCF storage SIG and one of the co-leads of the Kubernetes storage SIG, has um, passed away. So if you would like to record a video memory for Brad, um, that will be given to his family. Uh, there is a link in the agenda, that first item. Uh, is the sooner you can do that, the better. And I believe, and Saad can correct me if I'm wrong, that they're planning on playing like a montage of these on the keynote stage as well at KubeCon. So um, it'd be appreciated. Uh, if yep, that's right. You guys so yeah, on. we're looking forward to any videos that you can share. So the sooner you can do that, the better. Thank you. And in addition to that, I will also post this uh, later in the agenda. There is a Google Doc in the CNCF where you can also just add in some, you know, memories of Brad if you'd prefer not to do a video and write something else instead or do both. You're welcome to do that as well. So, um, thank you. Um, so the first piece of business is the use case document that we've been talking about for a while that Luis has put together. Go ahead and open this. Can you guys see that? Did it keep sharing? I'm assuming yes. Um, yeah. Yes. If you click on the, instead of clicking on that, click on the um, my branch there. 
right above that. Use case, that's, yeah, click on that. That way you can actually view what it looks like. And then um, go down to use cases on the, on the top. I don't, I haven't changed this part yet. Oh, you haven't, okay. Yeah, just the directory use cases. So what I've done here is kind of taken your feedback from the, the previous meetings, uh, had it in a way that it's simple to add, simple to edit, simple to track versions, uh, simple to remove and simple to, to add new ones um, and keep it, a, a, keep it concise for those who are new. So what I tried to do is uh, I created a small template that's right there and I created a sample uh, use case uh, using the template. So we can click on the template first and you can see how simple it is. And uh, I took the top part from Kubernetes uh, style of doing caps. So this is just an idea. Every, again, this is a straw man. I'm not uh, saying this is the way it should be, but um, it, uh, it's just a start. And uh, if you guys feel this is the correct direction, we can continue going this direction or we can pivot in another direction. So I took the cap title uh, area. Like if you click on raw here, then you can see that area looks, it's just taken from, from the caps in Kubernetes and it uh, provides a way to track it and know the state of the document and things like that. And then the document is just regular markdown. Um, the document, the way I have structured it is to make it simple for readers and then refer back to the storage landscape document in any, any, uh, 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 words or, or values that we, we want them to, to, to learn about. And um, so it's just pretty much table driven. And then I can show you an example of what it looks like if we go back one. So if you go back another, because this is a template and then go down and down. Uh, yeah, you can click that, it's fine. Yep, keep going. So this is what it looks like. Uh, here's a, a very small example of how to do an object storage NAS gateway using MinIO. Um, this is a small example of how to deploy MinIO and have um, the storage backend for it. And the use case is, as is described here, a model for the requirement of accessing files over a shell file system and an object store at the same time. Okay, so for that use case, you can go down and assess what the goals are uh, for the, the small document, but you can, uh, if you go scroll down a little bit. I keep going. So here you can see the, the storage landscape summary. Uh, it tells you that it's recommended to use those. It tells you if you use one of those, this is what you should check for. If you use a block store, make sure you have a file system on top. And you also need a service to be able to, to share that. Um, if you go down a little bit more in file systems, it tells it says, look, if you have a remote file system, this is actually really nice because the storage system already has a model for, for clients to access and it has a model for you to go from node to node to connect and disconnect. Um, so, so pretty much this is like, um, you know, and then again, I said, look, object stores and key values, are, they're, they just don't work in this use case. So this is the straw man. Um, if you can notice also uh, things like durability and file systems and other stores are all links. They all refer to that section in the um, landscape paper. So uh, as a user that I'm not very familiar with storage and I wanna click on file systems, I can click on that and it puts me right on that page on the storage landscape. So I can read that more information about it. Um, and again, the, the goal is to make it concise. I didn't wanna go into like, too much detail. Um, we can add more detail, but uh, it is just a, a use case recommendation. What do you guys think? I think it's excellent. Um, I love having the tables to be able to concisely determine where it fits and where it doesn't. Um, I think that helps. I think that helps if we're able to like 
later on as well be able to take these type of things and put side by side and see where we have gaps. That's been a big discussion on the TOC. Like we have so many projects. I don't think that's true in storage, but mm. you know, where do we see the landscape going and where do we have gaps where we want to foster projects that fill the gaps? So mm. I think having something like this will will help us be able to tackle that a little bit more easily. Mm. And, and again, I try to make sure I use the same words as the landscape document. So the landscape document has like store stack section, block store section. I just refer to those. So I kind of applied that document to this use case, in other words. So, so I think this is, this is, um, this is really good. It's, it's kind of really simple. I like the fact it ties into the landscape document. Um, what did you mean in the storage stacks section? Um, so things like centralized, distributed, sharded. I think those were topologies, right, in the landscape. But, yeah. But, but, I, but what do you mean by recommended? Yeah, it's. I'm not. I'm trying to not say that it's not recommended. I guess that's the word. Uh, it's like a, it's a binary thing. Maybe we cannot make it binary. Make it three, meaning like it doesn't matter. Um, right. Uh, but uh, right now it's binary. But uh, it really doesn't matter. It's um, how the storage stack does it because it's it's more of an a protocol front. But you're right. I mean, maybe maybe instead of just recommended and not recommended, we can have three states, like it it NA like not applicable, something like that. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Is that is that I good? I really like this. Yeah, yeah, no, I I, I really like that. that um I, I kind of like the idea, you're right, of, of saying um you know, you can use distributed or, or pipe converge, for example. Um, but the optimal is might be something, right? For it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, and do we do we want to go? Um, do we want to provide um, an example in the use case? So, like, um, would it be worth saying, for example, you know, you know, if you want to start Minio with? Um, a storage class. Mm -hmm. This is how you do oh. it, for example. Yeah, I put it as a non-goal that I, uh, this doesn't show step by step, but at the bottom of this page, there's a reference. If you go to ah, the, okay, I saw I, I I saw the reference to the to the Minio documentation, right? Yeah, okay. and it pushes you and tells you exactly how to do it. So, yeah, right there, at the reference at the bottom. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I, I have a bit of a concern here, which is that this could be interpreted as, and this could become a list of kind of uh, product or project promotional pages. Um, you know, we, we, in this particular example, we kind of seem to start with the assumption that Minio is the solution. Um, and then essentially, justify it and it's it it sort of doesn't feel to me all of the, the flavor that we you know understood the problem the requirements and then uh you know spelled out a bunch of different ways to do it um with pros and cons of each way which would seem like the sort of balanced approach to something like this all so the good question, and I felt the same way as I was creating it. Um, so I I completely agree. Um, I feel, and, and this is how I balanced it, and I wanted to get your opinion because I can go either way. Um, one of the things I was thinking of is as a customer, or as a user, I want to deploy, I'm looking for you know exactly what I want to deploy. I want to deploy I have this use case. And uh, we could, in, uh, this is just a, 
a very simple web page here. I, I knew Minayo, so I used it as an example, but um, we could, you could do the same thing with Ceph or Rook, um, and you could create other ones, other pages just like it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it doesn't, in nowhere on this page, for example, I put that this is, that Minayo is the recommended model. I, I instead say, here's an example using Minayo and what it requires, right? And so I try to be clear about that. And yeah. that gives the opportunity for others uh, to add their, to their um, pages to GitHub, which their recommendations. So that, that's how I balanced it. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I don't, I don't know that a catalog of, of you know, how to's is is necessarily as useful as the uh, thinking process by which you take a, a specified, a well specified use case, and you then uh, analyze what the requirements are and the different ways that you can do it. Sure, uh, but we the key thing is that the customers are looking for a specific thing, right? They're well, looking. Before they could decide whether they were interesting, interested in running MinIO as an AS gateway, they have a whole bunch of other homework to do to figure out whether that's in fact useful to them. Okay, uh, so let's step back a little bit and think, this is just an example. I just, I, I'm not need to push this one, but I'm trying to think the goal was to say, I want to deploy Kafka, for example, right? Now I'm going after a specific project. Mm-hmm. Do we want to, I mean, trying to go back to the root of this pro, of this task, which is, do we want to be like that? Do we want to say, you're deploying Kafka as a use case, here's the recommended storage for that. In other words, here's a recommended app, and here's the storage for that. And I chose the app to be Minayo. Now, do we not want to do that? Do we want to be really, really generic? Like, if you deploy a like a, a message bus app do you so, want to use it? that's one that's my so, concern so 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 my two cents here uh, i mean minio is possibly a bit ambiguous because it kind of um it sort of sits in the storage space as well as being a use case right that can consume mm -hmm. storage but um i i think what we what we really want to capture out of these use cases is um different applications that consume storage um, mm -hmm. and link that to what we have in the landscape looking to kind of say this application these these type of topologies this type of um, storage is, is optimal or recommended for them mm -hmm. um, and we may want to and we may want to um, sort of maybe augment it and, and have maybe a notes category or something in, in this in this example template that <clears throat> that um, we can talk about because in the landscape documents we have the attributes um, like um, failover and uh, scalability and performance and that kind of thing um, and, and maybe and consistency durability whatever um, so so maybe we, we we can say you know we, we, we could have um, a section with notes to cover some of those attributes to be added to this so so it, is, it would be a use case like Kafka perhaps or, or a database or a message queue or a, you know whatever that stateful um, use case is that that mm -hmm. is consuming storage um, and we say okay we have the we have the you know is it is it should it be file system should it be local should it be remote should it be um, a distributed topology or a centralized whatever and, and we and we list all of those things and then we also say for example say for Kafka for the sake of the example um, you know we can say Kafka is um, uh, dependent on lots of sequential I/O performance for example um, you know and if we do another one for wrapped MQ, we could say, you know, it's it's um, mm -hmm. it's dependent on on lots of random I/O, and you need very strong consistency or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, those those kind of things. Um, um, so that we can we can the, the idea is specifically to allow users to better understand how to deploy their stateful applications. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. I mean, that's that's the model I'm going after, and I know that we. Had, 
Actually, it's a kind of a double-edged sword because we're talking about projects as applications that consume storage, but they're also promoting promoting those projects. So we have to be careful. Um, again, I uh, this is a straw man. I want to really get your opinion on it. So I completely understand, Quentin, what you mean. Um, and I'm trying to, I don't, I don't know how to uh, uh, satisfy the requirement of, of helping customers or, and users at, at the same time being ambiguous. Um, I, I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Uh, so I, I'm not disagreeing with you is what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I think we touched on that a little bit last time. Like yeah. if we're so vague, this has little value, right? Mm -hmm. Like if, if we just just mention mm -hmm. the general data structures and put it into a document, it doesn't really help people get started or understand mm -hmm. um, these different things. Um, there is an issue of these becoming stale, like there, there could be something, a different offering than Minio. I mean, I think we just, we like all open source things, we would open it up to different use cases that also address the same thing. In exactly. Document, um, yep. as an alternative. I mean, that's all we can do. That's the CNCF is, you know, landscapes meant to be rich and diverse and have overlap. Yeah. Um, and we can also reference to each other in the documents when they when they have the same um, use case, different uh, technologies. We can put them all in the same group uh, uh, or linked to each other, so uh, users can see the other models with other projects. So I, I agree that we want to make this as useful as possible, um, and and you know having it very generic is it makes it difficult to be useful. Um, but at the same time, I think I agree with Quentin, we have to be aware that, you know, the CNCF can be used as a platform for promotion. And as soon as a product is mentioned anywhere, it incentivizes anybody who is a competitor in that space. I completely sure agree. Yeah. And it, as soon as oh, okay. a product name, you know, everyone is going to want their product name there. Right. But, but just to clarify, right, we're, we're not, um, we're not specifying different storage products here. And we're not saying, if you want to run Kafka for the sake of the argument, use this product. What we're saying is, these are the attributes you're looking for out of a storage system. Um, and these are the things that, 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 you need to, um, that you need to consider for that use case, right? Now, the, the idea of doing it in GitHub was also a case of, right, if you, you can you can now look at Kafka and you can say it benefits from a local file system with strong performance or whatever. Um, and then that allows them to look at the storage landscape and make their own decisions as to what storage system they're going to use um, or what cloud service or project or whatever else they're going to use. But we're not we're not actually recommending a project per se. We um, um, we're trying to um, we're trying to give people advice on what how how to move their stateful applications or how to use stateful applications in, in these environments. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree sense. with the I agree with the intention of this, and I understand that the intention is not to pitch a product; it is to explain a use case and then use a product as necessary as an example. But I think even with that you're going to have folks who are going to say, hey, why is my competitor's product named here? I want to update this example to include my product. That's not fair. Let me in. And so okay. I, I want to make well, sure that we kind of have a plan and a story for if that happens, how do you deal with that? I think there's two, mo two answers to that. Um, one is that it's on GitHub, so anybody can edit. Um, and we can go through the process. They can create. They can create their own also. So we're, we're not. It's not like um, when when we go through the process of accepting a project into the CNCF, we have to go through certain things. But creating a small page on GitHub, that's very very easy and very low, uh, very low ramp. The second one is that it could be that instead, and here's another way of doing it, instead of us uh, creating this uh, pages and hosting it here which could cause the issue, is that we create the template and we let projects host them 
on their page on their web pages and they manage that uh, we just kind of uh, promote the, the the template and let the projects then post it on their pages right and um, they, they could refer back to the landscape document just like this github documents doing um, then that is not up to us we don't we don't host anymore um, it's another way yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily think hosting is, is the problem in my opinion. In, in my opinion, the function of this group is to provide unbiased, balanced, uh, and useful information to primarily to the user community mm -hmm. as one of our functions. We have other functions too. And um, I think that doing that focused on one, you know, maybe, maybe I'm out of line here. I mean, I'm prepared to, it, it just doesn't feel like we're fulfilling the need here. But the need is, you know, I want to build my own uh, object store on top of my file systems. Uh, what, what options do I have? And, and what are the pros and cons of the different options? That, that to me is what we were trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, and correct me if I'm wrong. And then, then I can come to a page like this and says, oh, okay, I've got, you know, at least these options. Um, and, and most people use this option. Um, and, but one of the problems is X. And, and if X is a problem for you, you also have option Y and Z. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and they have these other downsides. Uh, so so the, the, this is, you know, narrows your choice from the whole world is my options to these are actually the, the commonly used ones with the pros and cons. Now I can, I'm can, i in a much better position to make a choice and then maybe I can click on a link that gives me a recipe for doing this thing. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, what I meant by another repo means like we don't, like we don't put it up here, but uh, like we don't uh, advertise it. But I think we are, here's how, uh, an idea with, I think following what you said is that in, when you write technical papers, you on towards the end you have to write like or when you write patents and things like that, you have to write a section of what other things are out there that are similar. We could require that when you create one of these, you know, there's a section you must have a section button that describes like what other projects are similar to this one, right? So that way every page has is not towards one project, but it has links to others if they provide similar solutions. Can I can I just clarify what the what sort of what the concern or what the what the objection is um, primarily? Right? Is it is it um, the listing of the options which is the problem, or the listing of the use cases which is the concern? I think my concern is mostly around having any sort of product names uh, mentioned in anything that resembles a recommendation or uh, by the CNCF. And the reason for this is kind of the history that we had, if you all recall the, um, the fiasco with when we try to define what CNCF or cloud native storage meant, mm -hmm. it turned into a giant brawl. I remember. It's different vendor, so I'm very sensitive anytime we have anything that looks like it would potentially cause conflict amongst vendors. Um, I just want to avoid avoid that or have a very conscious plan when that starts to happen. Yep. So maybe a good way would be to put the use case instead of object store NAS gateway using MinIO would be um, object store gateways and then so it would explain use cases for why we would want to use an object store gateway, the topology architecture advantages of that. And then under references, yes, it would be up to the author to provide N examples. So we could put reference architectures or example references or hmm. or do we just expect the user to go out and Google those? I thought about I, that. I, I think just Sorry, I just I, I thought about that, uh, Aaron. And the problem was was that in each implementation of the gateway was different. For example, if I compare MinIO to and again I view this as an application that consumes storage, right? If I use MinIO to OpenStack Swift to Rook, they have different ways of requiring storage, that, and then they all uh, have the same. Uh, 
they all satisfy the requirement of, of accessing the file and an object. So if I would suggest is that I would write all three, right? Uh, using Minio, using Rook, and, and using OpenStack Swift, for example, because they have different requirements. Does that make sense? Because in OpenStack Swift, you don't I, want to have I think I, I get where you're going. In order for this to be useful, you kind of have to be uh, application specific. Yeah. But at the same time, I do think that um, products are responsible for providing their own documentation for how to deploy in Kubernetes, et cetera, et cetera. And what we want to capture here is not necessarily, hey, here is how you integrate with a specific product, but holistically, here is a product category, and here's generally architecturally how it works. And then if you're interested uh, about a specific product, you go look at that product's documentation. I may be okay with what uh, 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 Aaron is suggesting with like a references link at the bottom where you could have specific examples linked out, maybe to specific product pages, but even that seems a little, a little, uh, it has a smell to it. Okay. So can I, can I, yeah, can I just quickly ask a question here, right? Are we, are we getting ourselves tied up in knots because the example um, that, that, that we happened to choose first was happened to be storage related? Um, would we feel this way if, we were talking about, I don't know, how to deploy um, uh, a SQL database, you know, of your choice, MySQL or Postgres or whatever, on and, and what type of storage they would require. Would, would, would that change the thinking at all? Because I, I, I kind of do feel that it's, we, there are lots of things that can consume storage, obviously, um, and we went, to great lengths to define all the different storage types and how they work and you know pros and cons and things like that. And what what we always said we were going to do as the next step was define the use cases to kind of and and, and examples of um, how those how real life um, consumers of that storage, um, whether they're databases, whether it's a message queue, whether it's a stateful application of whatever type is consuming the storage. Now in this particular case, we kind of chose an ambiguous example because Minio is obviously both a storage consumer and a storage provider. So, so I, can, I can understand the worry here. But if, if this was say, I don't know, a database or an example of how to configure a message queue on, on a storage platform, would that have the same concern? I, th I think you've hit the nail on the head, Alex. Um, I think if we treated the use case here as building an object store um, on premise, it looks like is, is kind of the assumption. Um, then, and, and MinIO was, was listed as one of the options that was available if you wanted to build an on-premise object store, uh, I think that would be totally fine. And, and the same goes for the database stuff. And I think I, I'm probably less averse to, to mentioning products than Saad is. And, and I understand sensitivities, but I think to be useful, we have to be comfortable saying this is the most commonly used, uh, you know, I think we should be able to say MySQL is a commonly used relational database, and so is Postgres. Uh, and there are also these other ones that are less commonly used, for example. Um, but uh, I think there are a whole bunch of things that are common, whether you are deploying Postgres or MySQL or any other you know, of those style of databases regarding what disks you store your data on, how you set up your caching, uh, all of those kinds of things. And I think they can be dealt with generically. And, and I think we can say the pros of putting your, you know, log file, uh, your, your, your database logs on, on SSD are the following and the cons are the following. And this is the common way of doing it for performance and if durability or cost is bit more important, this is the common way of doing it. I think that'd be totally fine. I think the fact that MinIO is in the title here is, is actually the problem, as opposed to focusing on the use case, which is building an object store on premise. Uh, right. Okay. So should we just remove the main IO from the title? Yeah, that's what I was saying. I think it should just be uh, build an object store gateway. Okay, but uh, here, here's my concern. And, and again, I'm just being plain devil's advocate. Uh, it's just that um, even the SQL model, SQL is just a language. 
I mean, we could talk about, uh, you know, uh, I would SQLite. Agree with SQL too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just we have to be careful. Like you could use like Vitess, and that will have a very different storage model than the MySQL on a single node. Uh, we just have to. What, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes we're gonna have to bite the bullet sometime, mm -hmm. and and choose uh, all of these. Also, all these databases are persistence. So they're all storage products themselves, even in our landscape. So uh, I, I, I don't know if we're just worried about just Minio specifically, or because if we start going towards databases, that's still persistence. And then we're gonna start picking, even message queues have persistence. It, I was thinking actually of using etcd, for example, as a example, uh, as a use case. Um, um. No, but I, what about console? You know what I mean? So it's like at, at CD, I think it's a project for CNCF, I think. So anyway. Yeah. No, I, we have to find a good balance, right? Okay. Like, I mean, we would obviously want to highlight the open source ones that are part of the CNCF, right? That, mm -hmm. I mean, if they're there, we should be able to put them here as a viable option. Mm -hmm. But it would be nice if, if the use cases could be put in such a way, like, why do I need object storage? Why would I want to use a gateway? Like, it explains mm -hmm. why I would want to do that, mm -hmm. um, which I think you, you've done. And then the more specific pieces, we would just leave to these references. We wouldn't put those specific changes as if I did this in Nuba or I did it in MinIO. What would the differences be? that's up to the user to go experiment what works best for them, right? And so that, so then we would leave product specific under references. We would open that up. We would let anyone add their reference there. You know, we, we need a disclaimer probably, like we do not, you know, endorse any of these products. These are provided merely as examples. Um, and then we're just providing guidelines of different ways that you might use storage based on your workload. I, I don't know, but. We can't so be completely uh, agnostic. So one model I'm thinking, uh, sorry, I, uh, did I interrupt, Erin? <laughs> no, no, I'm done. Go ahead. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so the one model I was thinking we can follow is uh, uh, you start with the cloud native uh, uh, CNCF uh, storage landscape document and see if we can extend that same structure here. Uh, where like in the storage document, we have sections for object store, key value stores, categorizations. So if we actually built that same structure here, uh, then I think that the, what we can think of is uh, a high level framework that describes how um, the trade-offs, and then we can have um, um, specific examples about um, uh, projects. Uh, the one, uh, the one confusion I have is, is Minio a product or a project or is it a, a it's company? Both. <laughs> it's all three. Oh, yes. they're all. So actually, I think that's where the, I think it's the confusion is more specific to the fact that it is, this one is all three, right? So if you just took an open source project like Ceph or uh, Ruby. But it is a product. I mean, it is open source. Apache is licensed. So. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm talking about like if, if for example, Rook is, uh, but, is not a company. But Rook is also a product and so is Ceph. Oh, so, really? Okay. Yeah. So, so, so just to clarify though, right? We are, we are not building storage use cases. We are, we are not going to build a catalog of all the st storage projects and say, this is the best way of deploying these stateful um, the, these these storage systems. It's not about that. It, the use cases are end user use cases. So in some cases, there might be some ambiguity because somebody might be deploying a key value store like etcd. And you might want to have a use case, which is how do you deploy etcd? What is the important thing that you need out of the storage? Well, you need the file system, you need strong durability, you need strong mm -hmm. consistency, for example. I think it's okay to say that. And I think it's okay to say that's what etcd that means. Mm -hmm. And if and if somebody wants to write a use case for a console, then fine, let them do it. That's the whole point of having a community with GitHub, right? Um, and I think the same thing applies to, to other things, whether it's 
you know, message queues, databases, um, or any other type of stateful application. I think somebody might say, this is how you deploy, I don't know, WordPress on, on a stateful application. You want a shared file system, or, a, a, or, or if you're installing WordPress, you want a database with this type of consistency, or this particular application needs a key value store with these attributes of, of, as the back end. I think those are all perfect things to have here. The, the, what, what we're trying to remove is the ambiguity from the end users that, that they, they kind of look at this and they go, okay, there are, I, I, I look at the CNCF landscape and there are, you know, 400 different options. How am I even going to, where, where do I even start from, right? And, and this is pointing them to something to say, you have these attributes, it needs to be a file system or it needs to be a key value store, it needs to be whatever. Um, and this is how you can do it. This is, this is what we're trying to build here. So I'm, I'm just trying to keep everybody on track because I, 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 I feel like we're, we're having a circular discussion where we've discussed this five times already. Now we've gotten to the point where we're, where we're putting a template together and we're rehashing the same old discussion. I, I, if, if, I if, completely if agree with what you're saying. Do this, then let's stop. No, yeah, you know? exactly what I was going to say because to me, what I'm, I, I seek storage, and, and again, I, I completely hear what's sad and Quentin, I'm not, I'm trying to balance it and, and Aaron, so I'm not at, um, not saying no to that. I'm just trying to s come up with, as a user, what can I, can, can SIG storage kind of compile down to me, for me, uh, something like a, you know, like a, a card that I can just look at with bullets according to the, the storage landscape. I want to do this. I want to do the following, and hopefully, by being in GitHub, it encourages community involvement. Well, I, I, I don't know. I what think what I'm hearing, and if this is what I'm hearing from some, I'd agree with it that a document like this that describes storage use cases by class, object store is a class. It is not commingled with SQL based relational databases, that would be a different class, but have a document per class. Maybe inside that document, you could link uh, examples right. at the end with links to supplemental documents maintained outside the CNCF that would go into a, deep a deeper dive on that particular variant of a solution. So something like Minio would be referenced in the class document uh, of object store, but the actual Minio specific document is outside uh, the CNCF storage SIGs realm. So, so, so let me go back. It's, I think we're getting stuck on Minio, but I view it as an app that consumes storage, right? Yeah, and, and I do too, but the reason I brought Minio up was just to use it as, a, as an example of an object store. Okay. So the document should stick to the class of object store written in a generic enough way that what is said applies to all examples of object store. So I don't think you'd argue that Minio is the only. Yeah, yeah, store. I completely agree. And that's what I was saying before that you could add a Rook one, you could add a Ceph one, uh, as object open stack Swift one. Um, they have their own models and their own recommendations on the backend store. So why don't we, can I just, the let's move on because we've spent 46 minutes on this okay Would everyone be fine with removing the use case to mention a product and instead requiring authors of these use cases to provide at least two different references in the bottom and it links to somewhere else out we provide a disclaimer saying we don't the cncf does not endorse these are provided purely for reference and um, move on. Is that, would everyone feel comfortable with that? Yeah, I think that's a reasonable compromise. Sounds good. Perfect. Um, All right. So, sorry, just, just one parting comment and not about Minaya. So, so I think one of our functions here, we're supposed to be cloud native storage experts and people are looking for us, looking to us for advice. Um, and so, so I think it's actually fairly reasonable for us to endorse uh, ways of doing things, saying we think this is a good way of, of, of addressing this use case and we think this is a less good way of addressing this use case. 
And sometimes that will involve mentioning open source projects, for example. Um, and I, I don't think we should be petrified of doing that. That's our job. <laughs> what we do have to be sure of is making sure we're being objective about this and transparent. Uh, and for example, if a person writing a document works for a company that sells product X, they should declare that up front. And, and whenever we make recommendations, we should explain why we're making them and what the alternatives are and what the pros and cons of the different alternatives are. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. I think the problem with that approach is that the folks who have the most incentive to go and make the changes are the ones who are getting paid to make those changes, right? So the companies who have products that they're trying to sell are going to be the ones that are very actively trying to manipulate these pages to make their products look good. And yeah, I agree. It seems yeah. inevitable to me if we become very, very product oriented or we have sections that are recommendations for products. So I really like Steve's uh, recommendation, which is, let's be generic about the classes or the, the kind of categories of storage and the architectures and then leave out the specific product details, leave those to the product vendors to, to provide because they will inevitably provide their own documentation. And then I like the compromise that Aaron said, which is, hey, we could link out to product pages if needed at the bottom, put a disclaimer there to say, this is not you know, official CNCS endorsed stuff. Uh, I think that makes sense. Yeah, okay. I like Aaron's suggestion too, and maybe add on uh, just a procedural uh, point that when the PR gets uh, approved, maybe representatives from the people linked below should be on that approval list. So, you know, in other words, if somebody puts their own product as one of the references and some other product as the second reference, let's have a rule that somebody associated with that second reference actually approves the text above. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, actually, I, that, that's a good point. When I worked in OpenStack Swift, we made sure that whoever approved the, um, the changes was not the one from the same company, right? Right. Uh, so I think we sh should be very clear. And actually, that's one of the things that may stop uh, or have a good gate of approved uh, value. Um, documents that go into this repo. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm all for that. Not, yeah, I mean, sometimes you can't find an, a, a person from another company, but at least us, we, well, we can. Part we of can the reference it. here, I, you know, I see the Minio one on the screen. If you put a second one there and put a link to something about that second thing, what that was not their preferred entry portal. Sure. You know, for example, if I wanted to be nefarious, I could link to some five-year-old document. That would be bad, and we don't want that to happen. So I think if somebody's name, product, or even open source project is included here, that somebody affiliated with that particular uh, tar target of the link uh, should at least review the document rather than getting blindsided by some public document suddenly appearing that they had never seen before. Okay, so let's... Okay, so we're gonna do four things. We're going to have the use case be genericized. We're gonna provide at least two, if not more references to uh, implementations of that use case with an approval um, out to those uh, open source projects to approve that they want that use case included and it's the appropriate link. Um, and we will also add a disclaimer to the references to say these are not endorsed by the CNCF storage SIG, merely provided as a reference to implement this particular pattern. Is everyone good with that? Can I just clarify something? Are, are we saying the references are, ref so, so we're saying the use case becomes a use case category and then the references are examples of projects in that category. That's my understanding, yeah. Okay. And we think that that's going to be less contentious than actually creating use cases for specific projects. Because honestly, creating a category and then grouping products by category seems even more contentious. I'm just, I'm slightly more worried about that now. Well, 
I would say that the use case for a specific solution or project is linked. So it, it's not like we're saying it doesn't exist. It just, uh, there, there's a top level document that attempts to cover the category and then provide links to deeper dives into uh, best practices and considerations for using particular implementations. Now, if those implementations are open source under the CNCF, maybe it belongs under the auspices of this group, but in some cases, maybe the, the, these links are going to point to other things. Mm -hmm. You know, using the landscape as an example, the landscape even allows commercial products. It, I, let me, it's only uh, eight more minutes. So um, let me, uh, uh, I, I grabbed some of the information that we just talked about today. Can I, uh, next week is KubeCon. Maybe I meet with some of you there. We'll try to redo the template and so on. And then we'll meet after KubeCon again and see what it's like. Perfect. I was just going to suggest the same thing. Let's yeah. talk in person. Sounds good. Discuss alternatives. Let's, it would also be good if we could collaborate with the other SIGs, maybe on that Wednesday luncheon to see how they're handling something similar. So okay. we have a consistent voice throughout all the SIGs in the CNCF and then revisit this at the uh, next meeting. Yeah, and I just want to say uh, thank you for, for driving this. And my concerns here are not intended to try and derail this. I want to keep the momentum going. Um, I, I just want to make sure that as a SIG, we don't get embroiled in any more controversy. Yeah, so, I completely agree. I, I'm with you, man. No, it's, it's appropriate. So I'm glad we're having the discussion. Yeah. We, we want to get it right the first time. We'll never go back and change it. We're all programmers. We know that. Oh, well, <laughs> so I have one last thought. Uh, um, I think we should, uh, one of our objectives is to also make these documents uh, interesting and useful enough to attract an audience, right? So if we exclude everything and make it totally uninteresting, then nobody is going to read it and it's be not very useful. Yep. Yeah, it has to be meaningful. People have to figure out, be educated by it. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And if it's... Yeah just general information we're not looked at as the subject matter experts, then we're all just wasting our time. So I agree with that. <clears throat> all right, um, we only have six minutes left. Um, so let's move on to the performance and benchmarking doc. Is there an update on this? Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll give a very quick update. Um, so we, we put um, an outline of the doc together and have started populating it. Um, we've had a couple of meetings um, with uh, a group of uh, uh, a group of people. I need to update the author section. But we've had a, um, a, a two meetings now with uh, users from um, uh, Percona and DataCore and uh, uh, Planet Scale um, and Storage OS. Um, and we've uh, split the um, we split the the document into sections, and we're we're kind of um, delegating uh, the the authoring of the of each of the sections to to different people, kind of in a similar fashion to uh, how we did the storage landscape document. Um, so it's 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 coming along. Um, there's still quite a bit of work to do. Um, but we're hoping that we should um, be having a draft within a few weeks, maybe two weeks. Um, KubeCon and will obviously slow things down somewhat. Okay. Um, obviously, the, the, the document's open for, for viewing and commenting, so we'd love to, to um, have any uh, uh, feedback if you think we left something out or if you think other things should be added in or changed or whatever. Um, is this, what was the tool we were talking about in the last meeting? Was that the volume benchmark that was free and open that we could use? Is that, did we capture that here from the last? Yes. Okay. So, so for, for the volume benchmarks we were we, we and the database benchmarks both of them were were free we also um um the the Percona and the um and the 
Tascam guys are are looking to talk about that. The um, this is bench uh, TPCC like um, benchmarks, which um, uh, which are open as well, which have been developing. Okay. So that will go into that into that section there. Thanks. Does anyone have any questions or comments? No, just that this. I think this is super valuable, Alex. Thanks for driving this. I'm I'm actually busy trying to figure out performance of various different alternatives at the moment, and it's a nightmare um, <laughs> trying to find exactly this kind. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Great. Um, I think this would make for a great KubeCon talk in the spring too. Um, because I don't think it's real widely known that these tools exist and how to use them. Um, so it would be great to, to better advertise that out, either as part of the SIG or as an individual uh, talk for the community. Yeah, that, that, that's a really great idea. Okay. All right, um, thank you for that update and thank you for putting that together. Um, the next piece, we have two minutes left. Um, Dragonfly, we briefly discussed this in the beginning of October, and I don't think we circled back around. And so I think we had wanted maybe to do more of a due diligence and had, I don't know, Saad, if we had talked to you or Brad about doing that due diligence um, for that, but I think that was kind of the next steps. Um, was there, did you guys do a co did you guys do a review of it? I have not um, heard about this, so okay. maybe Brad has or did. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, uh, but I'm happy to follow up. Just uh, let me know. We can follow up on Slack or email. Perfect. Okay. That's a good I don't way. remember seeing this either. It was maybe there weren't, maybe it wasn't a well attended meeting. We kind of all have a very foggy remembrance of it, um, to be honest. And I think maybe Clint cool. and Alex and I talked about it separately. We maybe needed to have the co-leads also better involved. So it could have been a discussion that we just okay. didn't So I, I don't know, we just need to maybe circle back up around it. Do you Sorry. mind putting Sorry. the recording there so I can check it out? Yes, I will do that. Thank you. Yeah, so so, so just as a quick background, Dragonfly was, was looking to do a sandbox to uh, incubator um, uh, promotion and the talk. Um, uh, propose that the storage sync have a look. Um, the project team has presented to us. There should be a recording and a, and a link to the um, to the uh, presentation further down in the meeting minutes. Um, and I, I recall we 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 all took some notes, but it's kind of unfortunately slipped through the cracks, and I don't think we followed up on it. So we we, we do have a, an outstanding to do item too. To follow up, um, there were Quinton and I had some concerns um, about the project, but we need to write up, down some notes and and share them. So, um, if if one of the tech leads um, wants to re-review the the presentation and the recording, um, I'm happy to sync up with them and share my notes as well. Should we do uh, like a shared document between all of us to? Uh... Uh, just have one place where all the comments are, or do you want to do separate docs? That would be a great idea. Let's do that. Yep. Okay. Has Hi, anyone Alex, already started Alex. one that they want to share out? Sorry, go ahead. Hi, Alex, somehow I remember um, Dragon Dragon Black guy says that Shang Li is willing to do a due diligence. So I don't know if that's going to happen, or it's uh, up to us to do it. It is up to us to do it. Um, oh, it's okay. And the process is still pretty squirrely from SIGs doing it to the TOC because the other thing that happened is I believe they presented to us and then the following week they also presented to the TOC. Um, so we have to better iron out that process. So thank you for bringing that up. And I'll include both uh, recordings in here as well. And then the specific, I'll think up with Saad separately and we'll figure out uh, the due diligence piece. So thank you. All right, guys, we're over time. Um, I've notated in the agenda where what items we didn't get to so we can talk about them on the next meeting. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you at KubeCon. Um, 
and uh, have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Thank you all.